this. There we go. So welcome to class six of our Premier Plus embroidery system. Tonight we will be focusing on some of the, trying to do two things at once, it's not working very well. We'll be focusing on some of the wizards that are included in the Premier Plus Extra and Premier Plus Ultra systems. Um, I do have a new computer so that we don't run into some of the problems we had with uh, running software and Zoom all at the same time. Just a quick reminder, when we open our system, our Premier Plus embroidery system, I have that uh, quick link on my desktop. That actually brings me to my individual icons for each of the quick links. So much earlier, we talked about the guides and the learning center and configure. I'm gonna go ahead into configure and we've done this a couple of times. I am going to reset all modules in configure. And what that does is it makes sure that if you are following along with me, your screen will look the most like mine um, as opposed to if you've made any changes to your settings. So once we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and open Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery. Now, this is a link to not just Embroidery, but also to Embroidery Extra and Ultra. And if you see at the top of my screen, it now says Ultra, and it does say not for sale because this is a dealer copy of the software. Um, the, what you're seeing is no different than a regular copy of Ultra, but what is different, and I think I've shown this before, is all of the dealers have a demo mode. So this allows me to, so if you have a question about, well, does mine have that? I can actually pop into all of the individual modules and verify exactly what we have one versus the other. So we talked two weeks ago about some of the wizards on the wizards tab here. And to get ready for what we're doing, we're gonna go ahead and open our hoops and let's go home. And I can remember to grab my hoops multiple ways. I can either use the ribbon toolbar up here under hoop on my home screen, or if I'm already in wizards, I can actually go to this little um, hoop at the top where it says change hoop. I had, give me just a second. Last week I had changed my mouse to color. Well, I'll have to come back to that. I changed my mouse to pink and I thought that was a whole lot easier for everybody to see, but it's not on the new computer. So let's go ahead and change our hoop to our universal hoop group because we know we have people with multiple brands of machines. And I wanna make sure that I'm on the universal large hoop three, which is our 200 by 260 hoop or 260 by 200, excuse me. Okay, and so I can access that either by the numbers or by the words. And sometimes the verbiage is easier for me to see. I'm gonna go ahead and leave uh, rotated, selected, so I see what I'm doing horizontally because what we're gonna do is going to be wider than it is tall and confirm that that's correct. That was actually the default, but in case you had not reset all modules, I wanna make sure we're all in the same place. Did you say 200 by 200? 260 by 200. Okay. Barbie, keep it up with the chat. Okay, and the recording, Zoom has made some changes and it's really um, a security for you guys. In addition to me reminding you semi-regularly that we're recording, um, it's for Zoom to tell you so that you know that you're being recorded. That's just super scary. Um, so we're gonna go with our wizards and tonight let's go ahead and play with our word sculpt, because we did not touch on that before. So we've seen word sculpt in all kinds of places. Um, it can be a whole lot of fun. It can also be really um, confusing. And you can make this wizard window a little bit bigger if you'd like. If you see down here in this bottom right-hand corner, these little dots, if I click on those and drag it, I can make this whole window bigger so that I can see um, everything a little bit better. And depending upon how big your monitor is, you can kind of outsize yourself. We have, um, with this monitor, it's, it's huge. So in WordSculpt, we have on the left-hand side, our shape, 
the size. So how big do I want? Whatever shape I have. My angle, if I want to play with that. And then my stitch type. That stitch type applies to this dove shape only. But let's change the shape. So let's go ahead and open the shape gallery. And the same resize function is here as well, bottom right hand corner. So I can drag this out and I can see a lot more shapes at once. And so here's what I haven't really said before, but the instructions following along are, are lovely. And I'm gonna do exactly what it says, but if you have a shape here that appeals to you, um, I don't see one that looks like a bunny or I might do something different. Uh, oh, there's a bunny. So feel free to pick something else. Here's my word of warning when I do say that to people. The instructions were written in such a way that you will get a perfect result or a pretty close to perfect result if you follow their recommendations. And the reason is that somebody who wrote these instructions, her name is Janie Lance, and I actually have, have uh, you know, been lucky enough to you know, be able to communicate with her and, and go to trainings with her and things for multiple years. Um, she's tried all these different things, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what colors work, what sizing works. So just kind of bear in mind, if you pick something else and it looks weird, that's why. She went through this multiple times to get the one that worked the best. So for the instructions, we're gonna go down to food and drink. Okay, and I'm actually gonna scroll past it so you can see all of the shapes. They have a, Barbie says they have a sewing machine shape. Where is it? In home. In home. Oh, oh I closed it. That was silly of me. Do it again, in home. Yep, we have multiple sewing machines because that's kind of the angled view and that's the straight on view. And this is actually, this one right here is part of the Who's Brown Viking logo. You should do that on charts. Anyway, sorry. So I'm gonna go to food, which was back up higher. And I'm going to select the, I think that's a teacup because I don't drink coffee, but if you're a coffee drinker, then it's coffee. Well, that's why I think it looks like a teacup. And so now we want to go ahead and set the size. So we can limit one or the other. If I know I want it to be a certain width and I want the height to be proportionate, I'm going to leave this proportional check mark there and I'm going to go ahead and then change the width. And you'll see the design has been scaled down to fit the hoop. It's just telling me right away this has been adjusted for my hoop. So I can either double click and type or I can use my arrows. And remember that if I wanted it to be 10 inches, I could do that and then hit enter. Whoops, let's go back. Now with 10 inches, it went to 254 millimeters. So we have the ability to get both metric and English and I can input my numbers in either. So whichever way my software is set, I still have both. And then when I hover over the measurement, I get the opposite in a pop-up window. So it's much easier now to go ahead and um, have your machine set for one versus the other. But I hit the enter button and it keeps popping over. So that'll automatically restrict the height. And that's fine. If I know I want the height to be you know, a, a little bit different, I can change that. And if I wanted to change them in, independently, I would uncheck the proportional button. Now, if I were tipping my cup of tea, I might change my angle. In this case, I'm not going to. But I do want my handle on the left because I'm left-handed. I am not, by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and mirror that. And then down here with our stitch type, let's look. We have satin, motif, a running stitch, and a triple stitch. So the running stitch is going to be just the straight line. The triple stitch is that forward, backward, forward stitch that we have available. Let's go ahead and select motif. And under motif, we have some options. And you saw the default is that little star there. So let's pick a stitch. You can follow along or you can pick a different stitch. But our instructions say to make sure we're in our universal group, which we have here. 
go ahead and drop down to candle wicking one. I'm going to drop down here. And I want pattern number one. Well, that was easy, but let's see what our other patterns look like. Some of these are really hard to tell what they are until you use them. So if I'm like, I have no idea what this is, what's it going to look like? That's what that looks like. That was terrible. Let's change that. So this is a great time to kind of play with these different stitches and see what looks best for your shape. This is a scallop of candle wicking stitches. Actually, that's kind of cute. I think I'm gonna leave that one. So play with that and pick which one you like. If I'm happy with what I've selected, I'm gonna leave everything there and go ahead and say, I'm gonna go back into my options. I'm gonna say, okay, down here. Now I just wanna kind of quickly point out there are some other um, options here in this stitch. If I wanted to play with the spacing between the stitches, if I want my stitches to overlap. Um, so we've got some controls here and I might want mine to be heavier. So I might set it as a triple stitch with a shorter stitch length. The instructions do not have me make any of these modifications. So if it goes very badly, I apologize. Let me say, okay, that just brought my little scallops a little tiny bit closer together. I'm happy with this. If I need to zoom in and see maybe what a corner looks like somewhere, I can zoom in, kind of play like this piece right here looks a little weird, but you know what? It'll work for me. I'm good. Let's say next. And now this is where we really get to play with this. So depending upon what shape you pick and what we have on screen, now we have the ability to kind of fill the shape up with our words. So entirely up to you what words you'd like to use, but I'm gonna change these and I'm gonna go and change them to um, coffee and tea related words. So coffee, comma, but no space, that's very hard for me. T, comma, but no space, crumpets. Does anybody have crumpets, comma? Cookies, aren't they biscuits if we're gonna call them crumpets? Cream, sugar. And I have the ability to tell this if I want just uppercase fonts in here or lowercase fonts. And if I wanna use each word once, I need a whole lot more words if I'm using each word once. So let's go ahead and fill this in. We can change our font size. So if we make our font a little bit smaller, we may get more words. And the margin is the spacing between them. I'm okay if they are kind of all on top of each other. Somehow that one actually looked better, who knew? And then here's my font selection. So random will just kind of go in and pick out some fonts. If I want to select a specific font, I can select my font and then I can drop down. And these are all the fonts that we had in the embroidery module um, on the lettering tab. So I've got the same things there. Entirely up to you, go ahead and play with it. Decide what you like. I'm gonna leave it on random because I like kind of the look of this. If I'm not super thrilled with the coloring and things. I can go here to my color theme and I can set my theme to different colors. Or if I know I want specific colors, um, which is how I am, I would go ahead when I'm done and actually do some editing. If you'd like to pick out specific colors, I would recommend using primary just because that really does help me kind of see each individual color. There's a lot of contrast between them, except for the red and orange for whatever reason. Um, if I go with all purples or all pinks, it gets hard to differentiate between one from the other when I start to make changes. But for tonight, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on our original. And then we have orientation. So how do I want all these words to line up on my screen? 
So random is just, you know, you threw the deck of cards down and they fell where they wanted. I want them all to be horizontal. Okay, but look at what happens with horizontal. I get shorter words in here repeatedly. I want them to be vertical. Okay, so that's vertical on the screen, not the letters are vertical. So there is kind of a little bit of a catch to that there. I want it to look a little bit more like a crossword puzzle. I could do both, but not really. Angles. I think that's my favorite so far. A combination of those, but when I pick that combination, it gets very kind of choppy in there. So I'm gonna leave it on random. I felt like that filled in the space without it looking quite so linear in any one direction. I also felt like all my T's weren't grouped together, but that's really a, a complete preference for you. You could get this whole thing and, and say, you know, but I didn't like this one piece and I could manually edit it later. But if I'm happy with this, I'm gonna go ahead and say, refresh preview just to make sure I've got everything I wanted. And every time I refresh the preview, you'll see they move around a little bit on me. So I can keep going. That one's pretty good. We'll leave that. Now, I have a newer, faster computer. It is less than a month old, so it's a little bit faster. If you've hit refresh preview and it's taking a minute, just give your computer some time. I went in and said I wanted something with lots of graphics capability, and this is an example of that. Um, some computers take longer because it just takes the processor. The little elves inside there take a little bit longer to get things done. I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and say finish. And this takes it out of the wizard and onto my actual screen. I don't think I changed my size. I think I started talking and then didn't change the size. So here, if I look at everything, everything is in one piece. You see, I have all these um, smaller rectangles around my lettering, but I've got this big orange box, orange corners on the box. And that's because this is already grouped. If I look at the top ribbon, everything has already been grouped together. If I wanted to make changes on this, well, you know, it's okay, but maybe I have the ability to ungroup. So we're gonna go ahead and restrict the groups, which means I wanna kind of pick and choose between here. And then we can tab through, you see I'm over on crumpets, I can tab through using these two little arrows or I can literally use the tab button on my keyboard, which is why I use that verbiage because for years, that's what I did. I used my tab button. We didn't at one point have this previous next design. So I'm gonna go back till I have crumpets. And so now we have the ability to kind of modify these letters a little bit if I want to. Um, you see that I don't just have four corners on each of these words because I can play with my letters. I can expand them and contract them. So I'm gonna to go to this crumpet here on the left-hand side. If I want this to fill in the space, well, I can come in like this and I might want my letters to fill in my space. And then I can also just click on another font or another word. So I've got all of this space to modify. And remember, we talked multiple times before about when we have these green control handles, it's not a locked design yet. Just keep in mind that not all fonts expand and contract as well. So if I've picked some fonts that are really big or really small, things might go a little bit funny on me. But I want you to go ahead and kind of play with that and see what you think. And I'm gonna put you guys on mute for just a second. Okay, I think somebody's leaving tonight. So that's why I heard noise in the background, I apologize. 
So I can stretch and pull and make these bigger or smaller as I would like. I'm not gonna spend huge amounts of time on this um, just because we have a lot to talk about, but I also wanted to point out that we do have some other controls here. I've got my point of rotation, that little circle. Let me go to this coffee where I can see it a little bit clearer. And I'm gonna zoom in on the coffee. I've got my point of rotation over here on the right. It's that circle that we have seen with previous designs when we select a design on the home tab. I've got my point of rotation here. That's that push pin that I mentioned. So if I move my point of rotation, to this bottom left-hand corner and I rotate, I rotate from that point. If I come off of this design and back to it, whoop, my point of rotation right now is still over here in the corner. So this is a little bit different. Come back. Is there a way to create ones like this outside of WordSculpt? Um, is, there, is there a way to manually? There's, you, can, you can bring letters in manually. And there is, a, there is a stretchy pulley. I'll show you guys that in a second. Why we don't let me forget that. Okay. So if I want to modify both, sides of the design at the same time. If I use my shift button on my keyboard and then I go and I, maybe that's not the one I want. Yeah, now it's supposed to be shift. Well, it lies. I'm trying control. Maybe I hit control last time and not shift. Nope. Nope. Why is it not behaving? I love new computers. There we go. Yeah. It's supposed to control both sides at the same time. But we do know that different versions of Windows behave differently. Control and shift, if I grab the corners, will stretch from the center. We did talk about this piece. Oh, I know what I was doing wrong. Um, when we talked about resizing things before, if I want to resize from the center point, control and shift work. If I want to resize, from opposite sides, did not do what I wanted it to. Welcome to my life. Oh, there we go. Okay, shift will lock everything so that when I move it, it moves completely. Otherwise, if I have no buttons pressed on my keyboard, every node or um, sort of pinpoint is completely independent. I confuse you guys because I just confused myself a little bit. And then I have one more little icon here that we haven't talked about, this little yellow guy. And so if I click on him, you'll see that I've got some controls here for, and I'm not going to get into these like in great detail, but I can add points. These little green buttons are points on here. So I can do some kind of interesting modification to this um, by changing some of these. I just want you to know there's always a more advanced function available to us. And I'm gonna go back out full screen. I don't wanna stitch this out, but you might want to. So you might wanna save it. Now, if I don't like a word, I can right click on it, go to properties. I can change the individual font there. I can change the word. I can change the size. I can change the shape. So in addition to being able to morph each piece, I can do some sort of global major changes. I don't like that particular font. Okay, well, pick another one. I don't like that particular font. Okay, pick another one. Maybe at this point, I want it to the shape to be oh, vertical. And what you see what happened here is I got my lettering in a true vertical where each letter was one over the other. As opposed to back in the wizard, when I selected vertical there, 
I still got my horizontal lines of text, but they went vertically on the screen. So we really can play with this, modify it, um, and, and really morph all of these. Delete things if you don't like them, add additional letters via the lettering tab. So let's go to lettering because I was gonna talk about lettering anyway. And so if I look up here at the top of my lettering tab, you see these shapes, these are what we very often refer to as envelope shapes. Don't ask me why they call it that. Um, but if you see this one in the top right, the, the fit to wavy line, this is gonna give me, so I'm just gonna type in the word testing. Hello, because I have to get out of there. Apologies, testing. And my caps lock was already on, so it went to um, lowercase. And I apply that testing word, that fits to a single wavy line. So I want you to see, I can play with kind of where that wave is. I can play with where the curves are. And not all fonts work well on functions like this. That looks terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And let's try it again with some more options. So when we talk about, can I do this with other letters? Kind of. Let's go to flag. And so this looks the closest to one of these. I just don't have quite as many. Uh, control nodes here. Okay, and I can't really move them left and right. I can just move them up and down. If I right click and go to properties, you'll see I don't have the ability to add more points for this one. So if I have something that I really, I have a particular word that I really want to work with, go ahead and take it through the wizard and only put one word in and, and bring it back out. But do play with your different envelope shapes. Pre-sculpt is actually probably the absolute closest, yes. So I've got all of those individual nodes. Not that I want my word to look like this, but you can do all kinds of crazy things with your lettering and give yourself a headache trying to read it. Oh, that was terrible. Let's not do that. At least there I can almost tell it was a word. Almost. Is that answer? Is that, it, I know I saw it in the chat. Helene, is that what you were looking for? How to modify just a single word like this? I just wanna make sure that I'm answering what your question was. Okay, let me know if it's not. Um, so here, once I have everything where I want it, and in this case, I'm going to delete both of these. And I will tell you that word sculpt is kind of one of those things that you either think it's kind of nifty or you really don't. Um, I was under impressed by it personally. I know Barbie really likes it and I don't. I was like, what? Okay. Uh, okay. So if I like it, I can go ahead and um, save it, combine it, color sort it. If I'd like to change my colors, I can of course do that on the right-hand side. And that's a lot of color changes. Um, if you wanted this a similar look, but maybe not so many color changes, maybe change some of these colors to variegated. So you'd have um, maybe a couple of words in the same variegated pink and a couple of words in the same variegated blue to give you some options. And then when I'm done, I'm happy. This is exactly where I want it. I've saved it. And then I can also go to file and print. And when I print something, I can print out a template. So this is going to print on paper or if you use any of the templating materials from the different companies, uh, Floriani makes something called template tearaway that you run through your inkjet printer, not a laser printer. And you can print this out. Now this is too big to fit on a single piece of paper. So it'll print in two pages. Actually, this one printed in five pages. How did it print in five pages? Okay. 
I have to move some of your controls around just to make sure I'm not missing the pages. Um, so if I go to page one of five, page two of five, page three is giving me all of the thread information. And then I have all of these settings. So four is settings, five is settings. That's telling me each one of those fonts, what size they are, what, what font type I used, what my settings were for that font. So if you wanted to print this kind of a piece, I probably would not print all of it. I would personally probably print page one, page two, and maybe page three. But we could print this out on template tearaway, stick it together, and then I could put that giant basically sticker on a garment to audition where my embroidery is going to fall. I may not need all of that detailed information. I may not really care what the dimensions are because I'm looking at the actual printout. I may not care about the hoop information in the background. Um, if I haven't added any decoration, I'm going to turn that control off. If I haven't added any, added any notes, I can turn that off. My settings, my export options, my technical information. So if all I have is basically my color information, I've taken this down to three pages, which is really the three pages that I would want personally. But if you wanted all that detail about which font was for each letter, you have the ability to do that. I am not connected to a printer, so I'm gonna go back home. And before we move on to the next wizard, I wanna just double check and see if anybody had any questions about the large mug rug. That's a really great idea. Yeah, you can absolutely do all kinds of fun things with it. Um, and this is a great piece for kids to play with, even if you never stitch it out. But if, if you have kids or grandkids, which I don't have either, um, this would be a great time that you can entertain them for a little while, let them put all the words in they want. The only thing to remember is that if you put a space, if you do comma space, um, you'll have a space accounted for at the front of each word, which again, may not be bad, it might help with you know, the spacing of your words. Uh, but if you want them to kind of all mush together, then um, you want to be sure that there's not a space. But to give a kid, here's the computer and, and type in all your favorite words or all the things that um, you remember from your vacation or you know, all the things you're looking forward to going back to school in the fall. Because it sounds like everybody's going back in the fall. Um, that's a great way to do all of that. I'm not gonna save this, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. I'll try and move you guys. Why can't I move you guys off my screen? No, I'm moving you to the bottom. I can't see you anymore. But Barbie can. So let's go back to our wizards tab and talk about another wizard. Well, in the hoop projects. This is a fair amount of fun. Um, and if you have never embroidered anything in the hoop, there are tons of designs from tons of companies out there. Um, and what this allows us to do is, is not have to purchase in the hoop designs. Now these are not as elaborate or as detailed. Um, if you're looking for in the hoop designs, feel free to peruse our clearance section on our website. There's a bunch of stuff that's like half price, but I have already built in book covers, card holders, key rings, luggage tags, novelty, passport cover, which to me is the same thing as a book cover, but what do I know? Um, and a phone case. So let's go ahead and make a, what are the instructions say? Book cover. Well, that's not a whole lot of fun, but okay. We're going to make some changes. So I'm actually going to cancel this because I started talking before I bothered to look at the instructions. And in order to align things, let's change our view. And over here on the left where it says show grid, let's change our grid and make sure that our grid is set to 10 millimeters, which mine is as a default. But if you had not done the reset on modules, you may not have this. And then I wanna go ahead and change my hoop. I guess this is gonna be a big book because we are going to change our hoop to our 360 by 200 hoop. So that is a much larger hoop. And it's the universal large hoop five. Now, for those of you who 
um, don't have a machine. This is basically the Who's Front of Viking designer epic, designer icon. And I think the baby lock, Solaris, and the Luminaire um, have hoops that are this size. That's a single position hoop. Okay. We are leaving it unrotated. And this is gonna give me a great big space. This is about fourteen by nine and a half. I'm mathing in my head. I'm not mathing in my head. Anyway, it's a big hoop. I can pretty much stand in it, so it's a big hoop. Because there's nothing small over here. And let's go back to that wizard. And come on, buddy. Wizards. Project in the hoop. Book cover. Style. Best book ever. Title, diary, gothic, Bible, sketchbook, or blank. So these are kind of presets for us. We're going to, they said diary. No, but you, I'm not making a diary cover. So I'm going to make it for best book ever because my diary could be the best book ever. It would be blank, but that's okay. Let's change the sizes. So my width, I'm going to double click to highlight what's in there and I'm going to make it six inches. And then I'm going to tab to my height and I'm going to make it 9.75 inches. And I'm going to change the thickness of my book to 0.5 inches. Well, that's a pretty skinny book. And then what this does is it tells the software what the parameters are of what my book cover needs to be. And if I go to view PDF instructions, this is, now these instructions are pretty generic. So keep in mind that um, sometimes you have to take them with a little bit of grain of salt here. This pops me over and what I would recommend highly is you notice that this is an online. Now it drove me over to the, the C drive on my computer. So under program data, that's where all these instructions are headquartered. If I don't want to have to go through this process and I don't remember where this is, I would suggest going ahead and saving these instructions. Um, in a different place. And I, on a previous computer, actually went into my Premiere Plus 2, and then I added a whole new folder here, and I called it in the hoop instructions. Except I can't type. Everybody knows that by now. I really can spell. So my typing is, ask Barbie, she reads my emails. Uh, and then I can save this book cover instruction. It's going to be the same for all of the book covers. I don't know why they didn't pull that, that piece out further to just make it easier. Um, because if I don't save it at this point, then I've got to go back through the wizard again to get them. Or I've got to know where this location is on my computer. And it's just silliness. So we see here on the instructions, you may need to adjust. Different fabrics make a difference. Test stitch. Um, and if I scroll down, read everything. So this, this last line here, um, I am a read the instructions last kind of person. If you haven't figured that out with my teaching style. Um, I have not done a lot of these. So I'm going to recommend that you read the instructions if you actually want to stitch one of these out. And so this takes us, this is the process. It tells me kind of which stitches are where, placement for things, what each step is, where my lettering is, what I've got going on, what I'm adding to that, okay? So just something to keep in mind. That we've got a great program here. Once I'm done with my instructions and I say, okay, then this actually drops everything onto my screen. Now the gray is not stitching. It's just um, a representation of where the fabric would be. This is, um, in this case, I think vinyl. 
because I believe it's raw edge. If I got to this point and I said, I really don't like those letters. Well, I'm gonna go to my lettering tab. I might pick another font. So I'm gonna type in best, control and enter to get to the next line of text. Book, control and enter. This is not in the instructions. This is just me not being able to um, leave it alone. Best book ever. I'm gonna make sure my alignment is centered. And I'm going to pick a font that maybe I like better. Let's go with this one. Um, and I wanna go with a 25 millimeter font. I'm gonna put it in as a straight line because I'm hoping to kind of cover that up and apply it. I did pretty good considering I didn't measure anything ahead of time. So now if that's hard for you to look at on the screen, not a problem. If I go to modify, this is just a reminder. It's gonna say, hey, we're gonna set what you've got going on there. I'm okay with that, except I didn't want that design. I wanted the one before it. Yes, I hear you. Modify. Mm. Restrict groups to this one. Okay, and so here's where I have all my different groups. This is where I can absolutely separate each individual piece. Again, this is not in the instructions, but this is the same instruction we had from the previous where I went to restrict groups and it let me go through. And what I'm looking for is all that yellow lettering and the controls that are kind of here. So from here, then if I go to modify, it'll fix it. Yes, I know. I'm going to select all that's visible and delete it. I'm gonna come back home. I've got to do this again because I have multiples. I am looking on the right hand side for the yellow. Go to modify. Yes, it's going to lock. Select all that's visible and delete that. And go to the next design, back to the yellow. And here's the thing I didn't even have to go to modify because these were already, they were separated. I could have just deleted it right here. Apologies on that. Um, and so then if I've got everything, you know what? I wanna recombine this. I wanna restrict the group. We're gonna select everything. I did that by going to this little icon on the bottom. No, I didn't do that by that. How did I do that? That I did, was that? Yes, I did. Oh, I zoomed into the, that wasn't. I zoomed into the box that I drew. But what I wanna do is I want to select all. So I'm gonna go ahead and combine all. And now everything's in one big piece. Okay, any questions about kind of this process? Now, if I save this as a VP4 file, so I go to file and save as, and leave it as a VP4, it's still a little bit malleable. So I can go in and still make some changes to it. And then for my machine, I would file and export if I have something um, other than a machine that will read the VP4, which is the epics, the icons, the new Ruby 90. Oh yeah, my brain is like fried with the machines right now. Um, I do wanna really quickly go back and show you when I went to file, export, see this export applique pieces? So I could use one of my digital cutters, Cricut Cameo Scan and Cut, and I could actually send the file for cutting these pieces of vinyl uh, to export it to the cutter, to export it to use cutwork needles and just cut it out with cutwork needles. That would seem like a huge waste of time, but you could try it um, if I wanna print templates. So I've got all this information so that I wouldn't have to try and cut it in the hoop. Um, vinyl can, very often be really hard to cut once it's attached to the hoop. If you don't have a digital cutter, um, go ahead and save it and then look at the measurements on it and just use a rotary cutter or even a pair of scissors. Um, you will get a much better result than trying to treat this like an applique and doing it in the hoop. Alrighty.
Any questions about this part? I'm just going to quickly show you some of the other pieces in the in the hoop wizard because they have us just do one, but there are some really cute ones in here. So novelty. These are little stuffed guys. So I have this little stuffed heart. I have a star, um, the little lizards. This one is super cute. Okay. And you may want to just go through all of these, look at it. View the instructions, okay? Remember what I said earlier about the instructions are for that group. So the instructions are not always going to match up with what's there, but these are little stuffies. They are great. Um, and the instructions will be the same basically for all of them. Just the color information may be a little bit different. Where there's applique, it may be a little bit different. Um, somebody said she makes her dog toys like this. Um, my dogs would, literally eat them. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but I might make cat toys. My cat wouldn't eat them. But the gecko, he's really cute. I'm just going to say, okay. And you guys have, may have seen this. This was, little gecko was supposed to be a thing kind of last year. And I'm going to rotate him because he's really horizontal versus vertical. And so this is applique with fabric. This is a whole lot of satin stitch and quilting stitches and fill stitches and motif stitches. Uh, and just looking at sort of all the things, all the pieces that go into him are pretty neat. And that blue is fabric. So it's the applique in here. Okay, so don't get like freaked out. There's no blue over here. I think there kind of is. I don't even know where this color is. Oh, I have a little, there we go. So if I don't know where a color is on this, um, on anything, I'll go to the color selection on the design panel and I will change that color to something really obnoxious. Usually I pick up hot pink. And then I can really identify where it was because a moment ago, I couldn't have told you that that's where that darker blue was. And his eyes and his nose. But now that I look at it, it, it was probably in everybody else's field of vision and not mine. Okay, so definitely take some time and play with all of these different projects. Book covers, card holders, they, they're fun. They really are a lot of fun. At least I think they're fun. I'm gonna delete him. And we're gonna go ahead and go back home. And let's do a little bit of something different. And let's talk about some more of these tabs. But quickly, I wanna go back to wizards. We've talked about the Express Monogram Wizard, the Endless Wizard, the Express Design Wizard, Photo Stitch, Word Sculpt. We talked about Quilt in the Block last week. Um, we have not talked about Family Tree and Family Tree is very complicated and has a lot of pieces to it. Um, so that won't be coming up for a while, and that will in all likelihood be a paid class, um, which is they're going to pick up with um, some minimal payments probably in July. Um, and it actually may end up being August, and if Barbie will remind me when I send the link out for tonight, I will also ask you guys some questions about timing. Um, I am taking vacation hopefully in July. so. Let's go and from home, we're gonna go and we've got a couple of things we haven't talked about here. We have applique and we have our modify. You've seen me jump into modify a couple of times. It won't let me go into modify if something's not there. But we're gonna go ahead and start with something new. So let's go home. We're going to change our hoop again, universal. 120 by 120 square hoop. So that is square hoop number four. Now, why is it four? I have no idea. It should be number two, but it's number four. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that natural because this is something that still fits on my screen. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Now, if you wanna stick with your Husqvarna Viking, by all means, this is the blended hoop which I have to find in the list. 
There we go. Designer splendid square hoop, natural. The difference is, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit down here at the bottom right. The difference when I select a hoop that's specific versus a generic hoop or a universal hoop is that I get some of the visuals for my hoop. So where the connection is on the machine here on the left, um, my little quick release handle here on the bottom right. Um, this is a good time for me to just remind everybody that that piece at that bottom right is called a quick release handle for a reason. It is not a quick close handle. I cannot tell you how many people I've seen over the years break that, stretch it, um, and then say it, it doesn't work correctly. It is not meant to close your hoop. It is only meant to open your hoop. Um, we use the little screw on the side. So this should be down. And then we use the little screw over here to then tighten the hoop up. Okay. If you do break your um, handle, if it's falling off all the time, it's stretched. If you break the screw in here, um, check with your dealer. They can get parts. I have done it enough that I want to stock them. Um, but I would check with your local shop. It will also say, if you have the old quilters do all hoop, the 150 by 150 hoop that came with the two inner pieces and it had the black quick release handle that most of us hate, um, you can upgrade it to this functionality. But if you have a machine with only a six inch space, so the designer one, designer SE, quilt designer two, platinum series, or the newer Topaz 40, um, the way this, this newer handle sticks out, it actually um, is sort of the screw here. It, it hits the side of your machine if you go to the far left of the hoop. Anyway, that was my statement for the night. Um, so from here, let's go ahead and bring in an existing design. So we know that we can either go to file and open, or we can go to up at the top, very, very tippy top, we can insert. So let's insert. We are going to browse to, and this is going to take me a second because I have not ever done this on this computer. Documents, Premiere Plus Two, Samples, Premiere Plus Two. Now, this is a little bit harder for me to see, so I'm going to drag my whole screen a little bit bigger. And I'm going to move this control to the right so that I can see because I was kind of here and I couldn't see which Premiere Plus 2 was which. So I went Premiere Plus 2 EMB. I'm going to open that one. Down to Stitch 2. Open that one. And you can see I can open it if it has an arrow next to it. And if it does not, I don't have an additional place to open other than just that folder itself. We're looking for holidays which is here. And now I'm looking for the heart ornament. Now I can do that visually with the words. I can scroll down to my heart ornament. Or remember, I can change my view and change it to my icons. And if I change it to my icons, I've still got words there. So it's not an either or like it is on some of our machines. But this way I can see what I have available to me. So we're getting ready for Memorial Day and 4th of July coming next. So we've got some great, that's pretty cute, that little USA there. All right, distracted. Heart ornament. I'm gonna select that and then say open. That's gonna go ahead and drop that right into my screen. Okay, so if I look to the right, I can see that I've got three shades of pink and some yellow. Well, I can see where my yellow is. If I hover over them, there's one of my pinks because it turned yellow. Well, I can't tell what that one is. And then here's the very top pink. That's the little satin at the top. So I can see those. What's this one? Remember what I said I do? Now I don't want to use another pink, but maybe I'll go to purple this time. Mm -hmm. What's that purple? Well, let me zoom in. So I'm gonna click on the zoom to box down here in the bottom 
right hand corner. And it has activated this little icon here with the little magnifying glass. And there's a plus sign there. I couldn't tell you where that hot pink is or purpley pink, whatever that color is, which tells me it's probably underneath. And it is because this is an applique file. So that's why the instructions said to go here. The fact that there are all of these colors tells me that this is not an applique file like some of the previous ones that we've seen where it's one color and it stops in the part. This is actually three separate pieces um, so that there's no chance of me potentially merging them. Now, if they were all still the three same pink colors and I clicked on color sort, it would have smushed it all together and that would have been bad. So if I really wanted it to be these three separate colors, at a minimum, I would change them to literally three different colors just so I didn't ever accidentally color sort it. But let's go over to modify. And let's look at those colors again. Color number one is the hanger, but it's also the placement stitch for where my fabric goes. Okay, we're gonna take that out because maybe I don't want that. Color number two is just the tack down for that applique. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and say, select all visible. I feel like I missed a step here. Hang on. Color two is a tack down stitch. That's what I said. And when we add applique with fabric, we'll add an additional tack down stitch and they say color number two will be redundant. And then they say select all visible and then delete. Well, that's some craziness because if I delete everything at this point, it's going to delete everything on screen. So I don't want to do that. What I do want to do, if I want to remove this redundant stitch, is I want to actually uncheck the other two colors first. And then I can make sure that I have select all visible and delete that. Because I didn't delete that one before. Select all visible there. Because I want to get rid of that tab. These instructions are wacky Barbie. So remind me to make a note for everybody. Okay, so what I want is the heart with the decorative pieces on top of it. I want to zoom in so that I can see just my heart. I've done that already by using the zoom to rectangle, but I also can use this zoom bar in the bottom right hand corner. This is a slider and I can just go ahead and slide or I can hit the plus sign. So watch when I slide. I want to slide just shy of being too big for my screen. Okay. And so now we have something that we want to work with. This, we have removed the applique functionality for, from it. So if I have a design that has a satin stitch and I wanted to make it an applique, this is where we are. I don't know why they started with this one and made it difficult, but that's okay. Once we have this limited design, I'm gonna to go to the applique screen. And so I can do this a couple of different ways. I'm going to click applique outline. Do I wanna make this an outline? And then how do I want to define my shape for the applique? Well, I can either freehand it, which means that I really need to be good with either my mouse or a tablet or, no, well, this is a touch screen. So I'm gonna try it or I can freehand point. So just bear with me a second. I picked the um, draw. And what I'm wondering is, nope, that is not doing what I want it to do. So I'm gonna change that control. Then we go to freehand point applique outline. What you'll see is now I have these little symbols here. They identify some of my controls.
And we want the heart stitches in a contrasting color. Whoop, where'd you go? Okay, here we go. And so now I can click and click and click. And I'm kind of coming along in the middle of this satin. Because I know some of you have probably seen, and this is kind of where you have to decide how wide your satin is. Some of you have probably had applique designs where the fabric either stuck out the side or pulled away on the inside. So this is a process where the wider the satin stitch is, um, the kind of easier it is. And when I'm done, I know this applique will all be done. If I right click it, then it tells me, okay, let's pick our applique. What color fabric do I want in there? A quick is just a visual. Uh, a fabric gives me an option to actually play with a particular fabric or an image. If I wanna see if I take a scrap of fabric from the jumper that my grandmother made me and I wanna try and you know, get it exact, I actually can scan in my fabric. Uh, maybe I'm going to do printable fabrics and I wanna see what a particular picture looks like. Okay, and then do I want it cut out? Well, I'm just gonna go with quick for right now. And from quick, pick a color, any color. Have you met me? We're gonna go with that. No, we're not gonna go with that because that's really obnoxious to look at. We're gonna go with something nice and gentle. How about a no, that was not gentle at all. Sorry, gray, we're gonna go with gray. They said pale lavender. That wouldn't be bad either. That was not as obnoxious as the things that I've chosen. Um, I can play with things like angle here if I've got pictures or a printed fabric or anything else. Okay, so these are all controls that we've talked about before. If I wanna print a sheet out, we've talked about printing that. Okay, and if I wanna flip this for, to create an iron-on transfer, which we are not doing, we've got some setup options there. If I say, okay, now I've got this positioning here so that I can see where that applique fabric would be there. Now, we can potentially work with cutwork needles with applique. If I export the applique pieces, that's just the cutting pieces. So I've gone up to file and export. If I go to file um, and just export the design itself, you'll see that I get a little bit more control here as far as exporting the design. And I can file just save or save as to actually save my modification. And if I go back home, what you see is now this is my piece of fabric on top, but it was in here in the pink. And if I go to my player and I play this, my, there's my placement stitch. That was the applique that I just did. Okay. So any questions about this? I see the chat. How do you uncheck the box? Which box? Sorry, Sue. I didn't see it. Barbie didn't see it either. Didn't see it either. She's trying to follow. She's trying to learn at the same time. Sometimes she, we reach things that she hasn't done before. Yeah, this is cool. She likes it. Okay. So what I will tell you is that um, if you clarify for me the box, um, I can try and answer, answer for you. And then there are pretty detailed instructions. I'm not going to save this, but in the off chance that I wanted to, I wanna see what this looks like on something, I might go ahead and cut it. So it pops over here into my clipboard and it comes off of my screen. I am also going to kind of reset my screen and go down here and zoom to fit to show me the whole hoop. Um, okay, so back to the unchecking. Mm -hmm. um, you're thinking that you meant in the modify tab. Mm. How do you uncheck a color? Oh, that one's easy. Okay, so inserts. Yes, you just click on them. This is my piece. Modify, uncheck. Click, left click, left click, left click, left click. So I don't know if I can touch it with my hand. 
Oh, I can. This is very exciting, you guys. Um, I also have the touch screen and I can zoom in and out right on my touch screen with my fingers, which I don't recommend that people do. But yeah, now I don't have as much control with my fingers on the touch screen as I do. But yeah, you just left click on these. And then if you want to actually eliminate the color. So if I want to eliminate a color in modify, um, any color, if I have a single design, like I do here, I can work with it. If I have multiple designs and I want to do a little bit of editing to a bunch of them, I need to group them together. Otherwise, only the one that's active will come up and modify. I have to kind of clarify that. Sometimes people try and duplicate what I'm doing. So if I want to erase something, so I wanted to erase this, or I wanted to erase this one, which was just the original applique. I don't know why they made you applique. It's something that was already an applique, but okay. So how do I get rid of that? Well, I actually, I uncheck everything else. And what that does is it doesn't erase them. It just ghosts them out. It takes them out of my field of vision. It's like, I'm gonna hide you for a minute. And then the only thing that's active, then I can either do a box select around it. When I select my box select control, then I take my left mouse button and I hold my left mouse button down and I draw a box around them and it selects that. I can, then I right click to turn that off. Freehand select um, means that when I click my left mouse button or if I have a tablet, I'm literally just drawing around here and I'm going to say hi. And I'm going to draw all the way around here. And when I get them, those lines crossed, then it selects whatever's within that space. So it doesn't draw the line that I just drew. It snaps to the nearest embroidery. Um, that can be harder for some people. So I'm going to turn that off. Freehand point select is one of my preferred methods. Every time I left click, it kind of connects. And this is a lot easier. It's also a lot easier this way. If I went, oops, that's too far, I can just kind of right click, right click. Didn't do what I wanted it to, so I just lied to you. Free endpoint select. But I can see where I am as I go. Um, it's not quite as aggressive as the freehand select. I'm gonna right click those. And if I select all visible, because I've done every, eliminated everything else. It just literally selects what's there, select all visible. Or maybe I wanted my yellow is still there. So I select all visible. And it goes, okay, this is what you've got. It's all together. I move it left, I move it right, or I delete it. And then I'm left with just a little charm. This would be really cute to do little hearts, take the, the little stars out and you know, put the year in and make little Christmas ornaments for everybody. All right, Sue is still having problems. It did not uncheck for her. Did okay. She, did you skip a step somewhere? So let's do this one more time because we've actually gotten further faster than I thought we would. Okay, so we're all going to go home and we're going to go file and new. I am not saving any changes to the previous item. Personally, you can if you would like to. From here, I would like to load that same design. So I go to insert on the very top of my ribbon toolbar. And I just realized you needed to be a modifier. That's okay. We're gonna do it together anyway. <laughs> I don't always remember, but here, let's do a different one this time. So I talked about the ornaments or the Christmas time. So let's collect the ornament. Okay, here's my ornament. We've got lots more color options here. Lots of gray, lots of blues. You see these three blues? This looked a lot like the three pinks we had before. Placement tacked down and probably some finished stitching in there. Here's my satin stitch, my yellow and my orange. I have my design selected. Now, if I don't have a box around my design and I try and go to the modify tab, it says, er, nope, you need a design. So let's go ahead and make sure we have that highlighted or selected with a box around it. Go to the Modify tab. And now I wanna make my own ornament. 
So, okay, I wanna keep the gray. I'm going to erase the gray because I wanna keep that there. When I hover over this blue, over the check mark, see, do you see that red line? I'm gonna move in, it'll be a little bit easier to see. When I hover over the check mark, I can see, okay, that's my placement stitch. I wanna keep that. Next one is my tack down stitch. I wanna keep that. My third light blue is all of this background of snow. I don't want that because I wanna put my own item into this ornament. This darker blue is the finished satin stitch of the ornament. I do want that. My yellow is the church windows. No offense, I'm not doing anything bad to the church. And then my gold is the little stars. But I wanna eliminate all of this stuff. So I'm gonna select all that's visible and delete it. Well, that sort of worked, except I still got this outline. So I'm gonna show you, this is not in the instructions. If I have a color that crosses more than one place and I don't really want all of it, I'm going to hide or ghost out these colors. And now I'm going to use this draw stitches function up here. And so this literally like plays through the stitches. And so I'm sort of ghosting out some of the stitches. And what I'm looking for is where did those things come together? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So I did that by left clicking and moving the slider around. But I want to figure out where the point is that we start to get into. So what I'm watching is at the very bottom of the screen, I'm watching where that stitch is traveling to and from, because I want this, these circle pieces here. So now I'm left clicking on the minus sign at draw stitches. Now I'm gonna left click and hold because I want it to go a little faster. I'm impatient. And I'm getting closer. So I'm going to start, you can probably hear my mouse, click, click, click. And right here, I'm gonna eliminate that church piece. So I can select all visible and delete that. And now all I've got is that satin stitch. I've got the hanger at the top. I've got the placement and the tack down. And remember, I would probably change one of these colors so they didn't merge. And then I've got the finished satin stitch. Now I've got a blank that I could put whatever I want into. And I can make my own custom ornaments. That had to be a modify. Okay. So hopefully, I give you guys some ideas for some other things. I will tell you, this is, let me see if I can measure this. I go to the view screen and I go to get length. This overall piece is, okay, it's bigger than I thought it was. It's like three inches. If I resized this and made it smaller, um, it would make really cute wine glass charms. And you could put like a different little blob in the side of these, inside of these and then add them on rings or little ribbons or something. Because um, it's getting to be that time where we're able to get together again and um, it's summer weather and we wanna know whose drink is whose. So I'm gonna actually save this because I kind of like it. Um, yes, I'm... Can you print out the template of the design? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you do, can you do that from any of the... Or do you have to be so the printing, the templates is going to vary. I can't guarantee you that you can print it everywhere. Um, everything's a little bit different, but let me go ahead. I'm gonna save. Now the default save is in the My Designs folder. Um, this is not a computer that I've done a lot of embroidery with before. So if I scroll up a little bit, you see we've got some pictures on what will be my computer. Um, this one, when all the data gets here under documents, there will be a folder called embroidery. And that's where all of my embroidery designs go. And then within that folder, 
I will have a folder for each brand that I deal with. And I will say like class designs or Premier Plus Two or whatever, however I wanna identify Premier to Plus Two class examples. However you would file things and, and name all your different filing cabinet drawers and hanging folders and subfolders, that, that's kind of the process there. And then I would say, just for me, because I want to remember, resize and use for wine glass charms. So that just kind of is a note for me to remember to make it smaller. Now, could I have resized it right here? Absolutely. Go to home, select all, turn on my resize function. And since I'm messing with this, I'm going to show you it is much easier to resize things in modify because if I select all visible, my resize is on, my control handles are blue. Over here on the right hand side, I have the ability to be very specific in my measurements. And so I want this to be about an inch. I want it about an inch wide, which is just about 25 millimeters. And I'm gonna go a little bit below. And then the height will default. Oh, it didn't. So I'm gonna change the percentage there on the height and apply it. And so now I've got my little teeny tiny wine glass charm. And that may still be a little bit big. I'd have to actually look at it real size. Well, I think I can do that. Well, I can look at my grid, that's a 10 millimeter. I still might make it smaller, but we've got that ability. But let's talk about one more, one more wizard. Actually, there's two. I lied, there's two more wizards. I'm gonna do the first one quick. Okay, I'm gonna delete him because I don't need him at this point. I still have this heart over here that I put on my clipboard. So, and I happen to be in view, which is where we wanna be. Um, the background wizard is an ability to preview what a design looks like on a something. Depends upon what kind of something you're working on. Um, you can bring images over. In previous versions of the software, this was called design viewer, I think. Um, it's been a little while for me. So with my background wizard, I can load a previously saved background. There's a whole bunch of them that are loaded. I can add a new background, which means I can literally take a picture of something. Um, it's going to ask me questions about what is it? What am I calling it? What's to measure some things on it so that I get a realistic view. I'm just gonna load a previously saved background. I can see if this design looks good on clothing. I can see if it looks good in a specific quilt block. There are a number of quilt block shapes already built in or fabrics. Some fabrics are built into the software, but again, if I wanted to scan my own fabric in, I could would go through the add new background. For right now, let's go with garment so we can see all the options that we have to us. I will tell you that I picked I didn't change my hoop and I should have, so it's gonna look a little funny. I'm gonna load my background. These are all the backgrounds that are pre-selected or pre-loaded in the software. So bags and hats, okay? There's different kinds of beanie caps within here. I just want you to see. So if we kind of pick a category, you'll see that as I pick a different one, they come through. What we really want is, um, Ladies, I should read the instructions, shouldn't I? And let's pick a, and because it's hard to see with all these other things open, I'm gonna close all these other ones. Beans and hats, ladies, pick a shirt. Um, in this case, the instructions said t-shirt round neck, but um, I actually prefer to wear a V-neck, so we'll go with a V-neck. Images are literally the images. They are not files that the background system will read. 
large t-shirts, medium t-shirts, small t-shirts. The t-shirts all generally look the same, but the sizing will be different. If you haven't figured out by now, I'm gonna pick the hot pink and say, okay, here's what my shirt looks like. There it is on the screen. No, I am not gonna do that to you guys. I apologize. Oof, that was bright. Let's change that to a pale pink. We'll go to gray. It's a little less offensive. Okay. And because I have this little tiny hoop, I am way, 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 way zoomed in. Okay. I'm going to zoom way out. So little tiny hoop. Had I had a larger hoop, it would have started me in a different position. Okay. And I'm going to paste that heart in and I can move it around on the screen and it does not have to be in the heart, I'm in the hoop. But that doesn't really help me determine kind of where things need to be. So I can move my background by using this move background and I can move the background so that that heart, then see what it's gonna look like in the hoop. And I can put that there. Now I can duplicate the heart if I want them to follow my V. Um, I duplicated that by right clicking and then going down to the duplicate icon. Well, now my hoop is really too small. Maybe I thought I was just gonna do one. So I'm gonna go to change hoop. I am looking for the widest hoop that I've got. So designer imperial hoop, because remember I went to the Viking and uh, rotated, but you can go to universal. And here now I can see, yes, I could get multiples of these if I own this hoop. Right click and duplicate. Now I'm going to just kind of tell you something that's not in the instructions anywhere. I can duplicate this and move it to the left, but what's going to happen is that I'm gonna get kind of weird jump stitches. So if I kept adding, I might actually move this one over here sort of reposition these guys so that as I went from one location to the other, um, I wasn't kind of crossing back across where I was. And I may like it asymmetrical like that. I might leave it down one side, but the wizard really is um, just helpful in kind of previewing what something looks like. Well, this is lovely, but how do I see what it looks like? There's a picture of a hoop in the way. Well, I can go to on my ribbon, realistic view, and it takes the hoop away. And so then now I can see, oh, you know what? If I really wanted this to be asymmetrical, I really need to, to move. I need to start my hoop way up here and maybe come down just one swoop. Or maybe at this point, I look at the shirt and I say, you know what? I want it to continue on the V um, around the other side. If you're happy with your positioning, this is just a visual. But at this point, I can now um, combine them. I can um, print a template. So I'm on the View tab, but I can go to File and Print. Okay. If I didn't want to freehand the positioning of these, I could go back and um, I could go back to the wizard we talked about much earlier and go to the, where's my brain going? The Encore tab, it's not on the Wizards anymore. And I could go ahead and Encore it into any one of my shapes. So I've got options here. Maybe I wanna Encore it into a curve. That is why they um, use the curved neck, by the way, but I'm difficult. So I like to do it the hard way. There's nothing to stop me from adding a curve. If you're somebody who doesn't like, a lot of people don't like the looks of, of V-necks. Um, some people don't like the looks of round necks. So you can actually visually change that by adding embroidery in the opposite. Um, it doesn't change the physical, but it, it changes the visual. I have done that before. And just taken a curve and actually brought an embroidery design that came more to a point in the front center and followed more of a V. Okay, so if we're happy with this, we can save it, we can 
not save it. It's entirely up to you. I just wanted to play with it and see where we were. But let me show you one more thing and I probably should not have saved this for last, but I'm going to. I'm gonna go home, file and new. I'm not going to save any of my changes, but you can if you would like. I do not have a hoop on screen because remember in my view, it was on realistic view. So I'm gonna go back to 2D view. That shows me a hoop. And we wanna go ahead and find a design. Now, we're gonna do this together. So let's go ahead and, and I'm going out of order on here. Um, we can use the Windows key if we're working with a Windows computer that has a Windows key to take me to kind of all of my controls there for Windows, but that is not how I generally work because I forget that button's there. So I wanna go ahead and bring in a new design. So I'm going to go back to my insert. Remember where we were in holidays. And that was under documents, Mirror Plus 2. You can see it here at the top. What I'm actually looking for is documents, Premiere Plus 2, EMB, Stitch 2. And in this case, I'm going to come up here and just click on Stitch 2. So I don't know if you guys, some of the newer, older computers don't do this, but the newer ones do. I can actually just go to my um, browser location and actually pick a different place and, and back up to that particular location. And I'm looking for birds. I'm going to double left click to open birds. Again, this is a different folder. So I have to remember to tell the computer that I want to view the thumbnails. And I want this bird. Now I can either double click him or I can actually, nope, I can't here. I'm going to double click him to load him into my software. Now, my hoop is currently rotated. Let's move it to our natural orientation. So I want tall skinny hoop. That fits, no problem. What do I do if I don't have a hoop this big? Well, I need to split my design. So we're going to go to the split project. Wizard. And this will literally take a bigger design and pretty rapidly split it for me. So if you're someone who has one of the machines that still has a multi-position hoop, or you have a design that's too big to fit into your hoops, but I want to stitch this out, go ahead and split it. The realignment's a little more complicated. And we're not doing that tonight, but you can, it is doable. So I wanna see if I switch this to a different hoop because my biggest hoop is maybe six by 10, 240 by 150. And do I want my hoop rotated horizontally or do I want it natural? Well, for this, I definitely would want it natural. Okay. I have then Overlap, the overlap is identified by this big white section here. Um, the larger your overlap, the small, like the, I don't even know how to explain this. The larger your overlap is, the, the higher the possibility that you're going to have to um, have multiple, more than two hoopings, because um, you've got this kind of great big gap. In looking at this design, and remember again that they picked this design for a reason, I've got this really good space right here where I can kind of do some cutting. So I don't need an overlap that's that big. I can change it to 30 millimeters. I'm still there. I'm gonna change it to 20 millimeters. Eh, maybe not so much. I'm gonna go back to 30 because I'm comfortable with that. I can visually look at that and say, yes, I can get in there and go ahead and cut it apart. Do I want, this software to have an intelligent split or do I want it just to chop? So intelligent split is like taking a pair of scissors and kind of cutting around a shape. And the split line is your paper cutter. It's just sliced down the middle. Um, whenever I can, intelligent's going to be my choice. 
And then if you remember when we talked about the endless wizard, we had those alignment tools to bring things back together. We had the corners, we had a basting stitch. Okay, we've got those same alignment stitch functions here. So I like corner based entirely up to you. I really like the corners. I think corners works well with design positioning um, on machines that have it because it makes it more precise positioning on the FOFs. Sorry, I speak primarily Viking. Um, so that I can bring them back together by literally dropping my needle into an exact point. If I want compensation on my design, in this case, it's grayed out, it's not an option. And then how do I want this connecting? Do I want a running stitch here? Do I want it to trim? I'm gonna go with trim. We go to next. And then the software just chops this thing into two pieces. Okay, I'm gonna go back here. We go to running stitch. I've still got this basting block around the whole way. So maybe I just want to baste. I've got a base that goes the whole way. This one, the corners, is actually only going to stitch the corners, but what we see in between them is jump stitches. And I know that's hard to see here, but I can tell that by the gap on the left. If I go to next here, it's actually taking me to the next piece. Pay attention to the view here, view one of two, view two of two. And then if I want to go ahead and export them in the pieces, I need to do that right here on the export all sections. I go next, it's saved. Am I sure I wanna proceed? Well, I'm not going to save this, so yes. And now I get instructions for putting it back together, but I didn't save the file. Okay, so why this control is here, I don't know. I think it should be here, personally. I think that save and then all the printing information should be here. But what you see here is how printing out a template, I can kind of piece it back together and see what it looks like. And I can get a very good visual of what my different sections will look like so that I know how to line them back up. So these are kind of my puzzle pieces and I wanna put my puzzle pieces back together. At this point, I would go ahead and print them. And even if you don't have a printer or don't want to physically print them out, save it as a PDF. And I'm going to go to my desktop because I'm gonna delete this later, but you guys have seen me probably do this before I go to save it to delete me. And now I'm all done. I'm gonna minimize this one. And here's my delete me. And so there is the two different segments. And you see there's the two boxes around them. If I zoom in, you can see a little bit better that those are actual corners here and here, and these are jump stitches in between. And I have two separate hunks and you can see where the software did an intelligent split. It came down here and then back up and kind of swung around the curve because it didn't need to cut that. It just mirrored underneath that straight line because it didn't need to cut there. And it just angled down to kind of come around the curve on the left-hand side. So it's always interesting to watch that intelligent split, how it does it, where it does it. Okay, and then I've still got you know, that information there on how it's split. So this PDF just is really helpful. If you do not save them, you have then the ability to open the designs. All oh, my Zoom controls are in the way. Uh, you have the ability to then open the two pieces of design, but if you did not save the designs, all you have is a PDF telling you how to put a split design back together, but you don't actually have a split design. Ask me how I know that one. Okay, I know that was a lot. That was a lot, a lot. Um, and frankly, if we had the time to have done it in like three or four each wizard piece segments, it probably would process better. Um, what I can tell you is that um, in about 
five seconds, once we're done tonight, the tutorial for this is already preloaded to the website. It just um, has not been activated for download yet. So I'm gonna go ahead in and download that. Um, we are just a little bit before nine, which is really okay by me. And I'm hoping it's okay by you guys. I'm going to stop the screen share. Look, you're, most of you are still here. This is exciting. Not this many people hang out with me all night. And that's terrible. We're gonna change the view on that camera a little bit. Okay, and I don't often go on camera as you guys have probably seen, although I do on our Facebook page. So figure that one out. Um, anybody have any questions? I'm gonna open the chat here so I can see you guys. Honey, you look fine and thank you. A good class. Oh, Betty Ann, I'm like, I know that voice. Okay, how do you download when you purchase the tutorials? Okay, so let's see if I can, I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna go back to the screen share. So, cause this has come up um, a couple of times. I'm gonna close that. I know it's a pain if you don't get them because it should be right there on the screen. This is a good bit for our last couple of minutes. Um, but if you have not gotten them, just send me an email. If you like, and I do have an email from somebody, but I didn't have it on the, with the computer change, I didn't have it on the computer yet. I still actually don't, it's on the other computer. Um, so if you go out to our website, and just for giggles, I'm actually gonna stop the share for a second, guys. And I am going to turn that camera off for a second. I just need to go in and I'm gonna change something up on my page. What was out there before? The her stocking. Okay. I'll just show you something that's out there. I think it's still up as a free download. Um, just because it gets a little more complicated for me. If I try and Mm -hmm. No products. Okay, hang on. It may have taken it down as a pattern only digital download. Oh, okay, put that back up on the website. Yes, and cart. Okay. So here's a here's a thing. You guys are having trouble with this. Um, this was supposed to be our Christmas in July class last year, and the world got away from me, as it was known to do last year. Let's go back to the share screen. So you are welcome to go out there and look for this. Um, her stocking. Let me refresh. That's my page. It may not have gone through fast enough. We love technology. Now explain to me why I typed in her stocking and I get tables. I don't understand technology some days. S-T-O-C-K-I-N-G. Let's go back in. See if it comes up. Oh, of course it didn't. Oh, there it is. Okay. Her stocking PDF pattern only digital download. This is a freebie that had been down. Uh, add to cart. Now, if you have a pop up blocker on your computer, and some computers do, and you don't know about it, this cart does not pop up. Sometimes in the upper right hand corner, um, you get like a little identifier that like pop up was blocked. You want to just go ahead and, and figure out how to tell the computer that this particular pop up is okay. I'm going to proceed to checkout. Um, here's my contraption. Agree to the terms and conditions. I'm already on my mailing list. Um, Here's my, you're not a robot, place your order. If you're purchasing a download, there's obviously a, a um, payment piece. 
And at that point, this little icon, this little line here, it says click here to download your purchase. This is the piece that a lot of people miss because you don't really realize that it's a link. Takes you over to that page and then I download from there. And this version of whatever stuff is preloaded on this computer um, does it, runs it through a scan before it'll let me download. I'm hoping that that makes sense. Okay. But if you are having trouble, because you guys, I know computers are, you should hear me talk to mine. They're, um, even, even when you're computer literate, I am not a computer expert, but I am computer literate. There are just times where things do not do what I want them to do. So, and sometimes it doesn't do what I told you it would do. Um, and sometimes I really have to go in and look at what version of Windows you're using. Um, this is, the new one is, I don't, it doesn't even tell me. I don't know, it's an i7 processor. I don't know which version of Windows it is, but I like this one. I did not like seven and eight as much. I think this is 10. I like it a whole lot better. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the share. I'm gonna go back to me. We're still recording, so that's exciting. Okay, questions, comments, complaints, you can tell Barbie. She's, well, she's, she's that, that way, that way. I don't know, she's, she's to my left. Um, so we will not see you guys in two weeks. Um, so in four weeks, the middle of July, June, June. Don't rush things, Bunny. It'll be middle of June. In four weeks, we will be back here and that class will be appropriate for people who have ultra. But if you have um, anything prior, don't hesitate to join us. Um, sometimes you can kind of see what's out there and, and whether you'd be interested in um, going into the new Sonet system. Um, so you can see kind of what's in the next level of software. Um, at this point, the only way to upgrade if you have Premiere Plus to embroidery or extra to ultra is to find a shop that still has um, an upgrade in stock. I don't think there are too many that do, um, but I'd be happy to put some feelers out for you if you're somebody who wanted to upgrade. Okay, so on that note, yes, yeah, so happy. The date of the next one would be the 24th. 24th, June 24th. June 10th, we are canceling. Uh, and I sent everybody an email for June 10th, I think. Barbie says, yes, I sent her an email. If she got it, most of you got it. Okay. So I'm going to Vegas. Um, wish me luck. I'm not really excited about getting on a plane, but I am going to the last convention I went to before everything shut down in 2020. So that's kind of nice that we're bookending this with, hopefully. I cross all the things, Beth, all of the things. We're going to cross all of the things that this is, this is we're done. And Thank you guys for hanging in here with us. Um, I'm so excited to have so many of you from all different places. So, And when we're through all of the basic classes, we will come back and do uh, some kind of software clubs. I don't want, I know what's happened with Vantage and with everything else. I don't want you guys to feel like you have been abandoned. Um, and I know a lot of you do, and it wasn't my call and what happened and how things have changed and technology changes. Don't get mad at me. Um, but we're hoping to kind of take you through some of the other projects and classes that were out there for Premiere Plus too, um, just so that it's really hard to buy new software or spend more money when you're not using what you've got. Um, and, and I know people that are still using 3D software, you know, so let's, let's use what we've got before we completely panic and, and have to buy new software. Um, I like this program. I'm, I'm a fan. And so I wanna get as much information to you guys as I can. And hopefully I've heard back from some of you and I really appreciate the feedback. It has generally been super positive. Um, so that makes me happy that at least somebody out there has learned something. And on that note, um, I'm out of here. Have a great night, everybody. And we will see you in four weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Bunny. You're very welcome. It's good to see you, Beth. Bye, Bye Robin. Bye, Robin. Miss Thank Joy. You, Okay. Good night, everybody. Hey, Good night. Diane, you still here? Good night. Okay. <laughs>
Alice got on when she got home. <laughs> I didn't see her pop in. I didn't. Oh, I got a thumbs up from Alice, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to stop the recording.